We're gonna place a phone call. Yes? You're not allowed to be mad. And why is that? I may have got a 3D printer. Oh, God. Well, make sure you don't open it and we can return it. Uh, about that. That's gonna be a bit of an issue with that. <laughs> what is that sound? Uh, that is the sound of 3D printing. You probably wouldn't understand, but if you come check it out, you're gonna love it. Ah, oh, fine. Don't do anything stupid. I'll be there soon. Unreal, see you soon. I'm not very tech savvy. I'm middle of the road at best. I mean, sure, I know how to use some cameras and some editing software, but I do need a lot of YouTube videos to help me with the troubleshooting and some of the finer issues that come with the tech. Which is why I'm interested to find out if, as a beginner and a fairly normal dude, if I can succeed with the basics of 3D printing and open up a whole new world of potential from within the hobby. I figure that a whole bunch of you guys and girls are in the same position as me, so today I'm going to be a guinea pig and I'm going to find out the answer for us. Dingles? What should be a beautiful shared moment of classic unboxing almost results in me taking down the entire lighting system onto our heads. So I stress again, I have no buy-in or street cred to be able to compare this particular 3D printer to any other, and those videos will absolutely exist on YouTube from tech experts. Instead, what I'm looking to find out today is the answer to the question, can an absolute beginner actually commit to buying a 3D printer and getting it to work? I've known about the benefits of owning a printer for years, but my hesitation to buy one I think is reasonable. They are quite the commitment in terms of cost and space, and my understanding was that they took quite a bit of fine tuning to achieve results. Inside the box is a manual, but what I found easier for me is to follow along with the 10 minute guide that Creality have up on their website. Oh yeah, I should probably mention the brand and the printer, right? This is the brand new Hello Mage S14K resin printer from Creality. More on them later. Everything is already assembled straight out of the box, which is a win because I want to get straight to printing. We follow the instructions to level the print plate, and now it's time to pick out something to create. I've jumped across to my mini factory and found this Space Rambutan Colonial Pathfinder made by Papskills Miniatures. Seeing how many models are on this site and other sites already has me pinging, but I'm trying to keep everything in check because so far I haven't even clicked print. Now I believe I can use their phone app to send this via Wi-Fi to the printer, but it takes the same amount of time to print one model as it does to print a couple. So using the Halo Box desktop app, I can drag and drop a handful of models onto the imaginary tray. Export onto my USB, I plug it in, and now the moment of truth. Safety message time. Working with resin requires care. Now that we are getting to the printing, on go the gloves and the safety mask, and we open the door to the outside world, plus the windows, to get some airflow going. This particular printer has a charcoal air filtration system and I was curious myself, so I brought down my own air testing equipment and whilst it didn't detect any harmful levels of toxins in the air, I think it's best to still play it safe. When in doubt, refer back to the manual and also check out the text guides online. My expectation from here is that I can just fire and forget, meaning that I could turn the print on and then go to work with the comfort of knowing that when I get home, there will be new models waiting for me. After a couple of hours, the machine is telling me that the print is finished. The moment of truth. All right, everything is where it's supposed to be, but tactical move here. I hand the tools over to Dingles so that if he damages the prints, I can avoid any blame. Here's the bonus items I hadn't shown off yet. To transition these models from harmful to handle resin to ready to play or paint minis is this space age looking capsule, dual wielding as a washing station and then a UV curing bed. Five minutes in the bath, then I remove the printing supports and pop these lads onto the tanning bed for another five minutes. I feel like a mad scientist. It worked, it actually worked. I could tell you a little bit more about the printer, but first, this is a painting channel, right? 
Flashing Badger Printing sounds like my evil twins YouTube channel. Hmm, 14K Resident Evil. <laughs> That hurts every time. Sorry about that. Let's put some paint on this model. No sub-assembly. I'm going straight in and beginning with a white prime. Base coats are first and sometimes I work on one area at a time, such as painting the armor from start to finish. But this time around, it will be all base coats. I'm not sure if I've shown this in a video before, but I actually spend around five minutes or so getting set up with a painting order. It works as a little reference running sheet and helps keep me on track, and I find overall that I save quite a bit of time. It's kind of like a teleprompter. It's kind of like a teleprompter. It's kind of like a teleprompter. I guess it's kind of like a teleprompter. I'd like him to have white armor because this is a one-off model. So practicing something that I'm not naturally comfortable with is a good way to get some practice in. Lots of base colors going down and now I create a small mix of contrast paint, medium and thinner to weaken it right down. Rather than a wash over the entire armor, I'm taking a few extra minutes and just painting this into the recess areas and panel lines. I take some and put this on my wet palette and then add more drops of thinner to create a really thin wash which is now a glaze. Highlighting the armour first with a bone and white mix along the raised edges and I'm not concerning myself with any parts of the model that are tricky to reach and even to see. I listen to the advice and the feedback that you guys give me in the comments below so I'm looking for an easy way to create a glow on his visor, his weapon optics and on the rifle itself. I'm going to start with a base coat of a bright white here and I'll come back to this again shortly. Layers and highlights. I'm treating this model as though it were one of 10 or 20 in a squad that I'd like to be able to paint up in around a week. So he's getting one or two passes quite quickly with a layer in most areas and then a highlight if there is somewhere prominent and eye catching. One-off models like this are so much fun. I wonder what his story is. He seems to be all business, but part of him also looks fairly unimpressed, which some days I can definitely relate to. Last time I brushed on some object source lighting and took my time with the layers, one viewer commented that I should shut up, stop wasting time, and just put Tesseract Glow on instead. Well, all right, maybe he didn't tell me to shut up, but it was definitely in their tone. This, my friend, is for you. Fluoro orange going on over the top of the white. And now it's time to paint the base. Now I bet you thought I was going to make something to do with a mining world here. Wrong! Instead, it's going to be the deck of a spaceship. A spaceship which has just landed on a mining world. Even for a basic style of base, here's my two cents. If you are unsure on colors, either go crazy and pick brand new colors that still complement your model, or play it safe like I do here and grab a few of the same colors and have the model fit the world and tie them into their base visually. Base colors are down and the bright white is back again. You know what I'm up to. Loading the brush up and in goes that same orange to act as a power source flowing through the ship like veins giving life to the craft. I'll set the camera up and zoom right in so that you can be the judge of the quality of the 3D print and then I'll give you my thoughts on 3D printing. But here is the completed Space Rambutan Colonial Pathfinder. So what did I think of the Halo Mage S 14K resin 3D printer from Creality? Well, there's a few key points we need to understand first. Again, number one is I'm no tech expert. This is the only 3D printer I've ever used, and I'm in no position to be able to compare it to other 3D printers. What I can do though is tell you about my experience with it and whether or not I think it's going to be suitable for me in the hobby. 
The second thing to understand is that this video is also a promotion for Creality. They were amazing and kind enough to send me this 3D printer. Now I don't put those mid-roll ads throughout my YouTube videos because I don't feel they serve any purpose to you. A whole bunch of products and services that don't relate to miniature painting is no good. However, that does mean that every now and then I will partner with a product or a service that I believe can genuinely help both of us within the hobby. So with that being said, what do I genuinely think of this 3D printer? And I'll be honest, I was worried coming into this video. I'd allocated an entire week to what I thought would be having to unbox, build, tinker with, watch a whole bunch of different guides, and then test print heaps of models before I could actually get comfortable with it. So what you saw in this video is my genuine experience with it. I was amazed that we could simply unbox, level the plate, and then begin printing. This is really cool, and I mean 3D printing in general. It's obviously gotten to a point in the design process of these machines that now someone who's a beginner with low IQ of tech can get involved and start printing. Dingles and I are already queuing up a whole bunch of different models that we'd like to print, but we're also toying with the idea of creating our own small mini projects with the design element of 3D printing. If you are in the market for a 3D printer, or if this video inspired you to now get involved, I recommend that you appraise yourself with the information available online. There's a whole host of reviews, including glowing reviews for the Creality 3D printers. If you are interested in a 3D printer from Creality or any of their accessories, including their printing resins, well, I'll add a link pinned in the comments below and also in the video description. That will be an affiliate link, so any purchases you make also go to supporting this channel. If you've made it this far into the video, it's because you're awesome and I won't be hearing any argument to suggest otherwise. Fun facts, if you click the like button below, this tells YouTube that they should recommend my videos to the rest of our hobby community. And also, if you leave a comment, well that tells me that there's a human on the other end of these videos and inspires me to keep creating more. These people are our patrons and they support the channel financially. Now to give you an idea of how amazing they are, well, if I was a parolee on an episode of Law & Order and the cops tried to leverage me for information while I was working at the docks, I'd wait until I was presented with a crisp Alexander Hamilton before I snitched on any of their whereabouts. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to Creality for supporting a dorky little YouTube channel by sending me the printer. And thank you above all else to Dingles. After two long years, we finally managed to get you in front of the camera and you were awesome. You absolute chad. People want to see more of you. Thank you all, I'll see you on the next one. Roll credits.